right. So what an amazing event. Thank you so much, Health TO, for having us here. Um, this has been amazing. What a congregation of amazing companies. Got to give a shout out to MedStack, one of my favorites in Toronto. So awesome group of people. I think Acorn is right up there, and I'm going to tell you a little bit why. First thing I tell you about an experience in my life that ended up actually having a huge influence over the path I took. When I was in grade seven, I had the opportunity to actually watch a surgery. And so it was an orthopedic surgery where we replace a knee, the cartilage had worn away in, in an individual, and so we ended up doing a total knee replacement. And so I'm in grade seven, this was like wild to me. I get to go in, scrub up, use that utensil to clean under your fingernails, scrub your hands, allow the water to drip off your elbow. Like everything was just absorbed. And I, I, I remember like every single person on the surgical team, just the amount of focus, what they were doing, taking care of that one thing that they had to get done. And I was in awe. What was amazing though is all of this, the thing that made the most impact was afterwards, I came back but two days later and watched that person that came in on a walker, unable to ambulate, actually walk down the hallway completely fine. And, and that just blew my mind that that could happen. So I go to the orthopedic surgeon and I'm just like, this is unbelievable, how does this even happen? And what they said to me stuck with me. It was essentially that, yes, this is amazing, but it's still imperfect. Right now, we're putting metals and plastics into this person's knee. One day, potentially when you're older and maybe you're a doctor, we're actually going to be using that patient's own cells to create them new tissues that are healthy and respond to those forces that we put on our knee, can heal, and actually be with that patient for the rest of their lives. Because in about 10, 15 years, that's gonna break down and that person's gonna to have to come in and have a much more difficult surgery. Their journey is not over. And so that really set my course to go down that path. Now as, as uh, it was mentioned, I ended up did playing a little bit of, of baseball and I ended up back in that same hospital because unfortunately I ended up having an arm injury. And so I ended up blowing out my, uh, my labrum and uh, one of the uh, little uh, muscles in my shoulder or, or one of the tendons in my shoulder uh, as part of my rotator cuff and essentially what ended up happening was I had to go in and go through it from the other side and, and go through that uncertainty and what was going on. And today, technologies have advanced and we have all of these new things and tools at our disposal, but back then when that happened to me and when it happened to that patient, those things weren't available. Today, there's a clinical trial ongoing using the cells that Acorn takes to actually treat that same soft tissue sports injury that I, I endured. And I wish it was available at that time but the future is here. Ultimately, with these new technologies like IPSC and CRISPR, scientists and doctors now have the tools to theoretically treat any disease. That's amazing. Groups all over the world right now in different labs everywhere are approaching each one of these things and trying to cure them. These cells are being used to treat Parkinson's and phase one clinical trial right now, post-cardiac infarct, macular degeneration, even male pattern baldness. Everything is being addressed. And ultimately, what we really need to be thinking about is how do we prepare for that? Because the future is here. Tissue engineering, stem cell therapies, 3D bioprinting, gene therapy. This is the future of healthcare. It's not manufacturing a chemical compound anymore. It's actually using your own cells to create the next drugs. And this is happening all over the world. We're seeing an explosion in this. There's over 900 clinical trials in regenerative medicine currently ongoing. The future is extremely bright. You, can, you name a disease and somebody out there is studying and trying to come up with a cure to it right now. And it's gonna use your own cells. There's also amazing opportunities. Just like we're entering the world of regenerative medicine in that era, it's also about data, okay? The cells inside your body are ripe with data that can actually help you predict what you may face in your life. And these levels go beyond just genomics that we've heard about many, many times over. There are layers beyond that, including proteomics, transcriptomics, epigenomics. And the differences with these new layers that go beyond just the, the general DNA in your genome is that it really is looking at a trajectory of disease onset that we really need two time points to look at. And so again, these are tests and these are technologies, even on the diagnostic side, that we're gonna need to prepare for. Because ultimately, if you're taking a sample at one time point when you are sick, that's not enough. And these new technologies have the power to move us from a reactionary healthcare system into a preventative one. Where we can actually say, this is something you're gonna face in your lifetime. Be that Parkinson's. 
and then use tools like iPSC and CRISPR to use your own cells to go in and eradicate that disease before you ever experience the first symptom. That is the future of healthcare. If you look at what's going on right now around data, the amount of, of work, just like in iPSC and CRISPR is exploding, is around genomics and linking these new, these phenotypic results that we've been reacting to into predictive ones where we can actually identify the source code that actually codes for them. There is a huge problem. And so when we think back in, in my path, I ended up go going and working at that same hospital in orthopedics. And we were going in to surgeries and taking biopsies of cartilage from some of those patients that were undergoing these total knee and total hip replacements. And then we're taking them back to the lab and we're outgrowing them to see if we can actually create them a, a group of cartilage or bone services that could be implanted into that individual. And so we're practicing to see if we can bring this to fruition. And ultimately there were some huge challenges. One of the major ones was age. Unfortunately, as we get older, our cells do get worse. I'm experiencing it, and I'm sure this is a pretty young, young audience. You will too at one day, maybe not yet. But ultimately, your cells are getting worse every day that goes by. And if we think about what is going on with our cells being the new drugs and the next resource that we're gonna have for doctors to use as a tool to heal you, then our resource is diminishing every day that goes by. And ultimately, those therapeutics that are gonna be based on those cells are only gonna be as strong as the cells that we have at our disposal. And if those cells are being taken when we're sick and when we're elderly, how can we expect us to receive that therapeutic benefit? That's what I experienced in my time when I was working on these projects. And it was a really tough time for me because I was sitting back looking at all of these amazing projects that are going all over the world, curing some of the world's toughest diseases and attempting to. And I'm sitting back and I'm thinking, what a tragedy is unfolding that at some point we're gonna have tools that can cure a disease but there's gonna be individuals standing in front of us that we're gonna to have to say, I'm sorry, you're either too sick or too old to receive that benefit. Well, that's what we're trying to not happen. Ultimately, what ACORN does is we take a sample of your cells today, and we've made it non-invasive and as easy as possible and completely affordable. Just by plucking cells off the back of your scalp, we can harvest the hair follicles, 20,000 cells at the bottom and the root of each hair, and those cells have been differentiated into neurons, cardiomyocytes, dopaminergic uh, producing cells, all of these amazing tools that can be used to attempt to treat some of these diseases. And this becomes a lifelong resource for you. You can use these as, as in the future to treat these diseases, but then also you can have these cells to use to pull for that, that first cell sample and then pull a current one and you can actually create those timelines and the differences of how that disease trajectory to use as diagnostic tools with things like epigenomics and these next generation diagnostic tools that are coming out. So this really is another pillar in your healthcare regime. And so here, we're here right now, we partner with HealthTO to offer this to you free of any upfront charge. And so ultimately you can come and talk to anybody on the ACORN team right now and we'd love to tell you more about it. But I'm gonna wrap up right now and just see if there's any questions that anybody has. Thank you so much for your time, I really appreciate it. Hi, uh, thank you. So I'm just wondering, uh, you said that there's difficulty in treating elderly patients. So I'm curious as to, uh, do you see on an individual cellular level, like do you, how do you see the age? Is it senescence or is it inflammation or DNA methylation, telomeres? Like what is preventing the actual treatment? Yeah, so there's a number of things that lead to it and it's a, it's a very long answer and I probably would get yelled at by Maggie if I went into all the details. But ultimately, um, some scientists have broken them down into six major or seven major mechanisms that actually degrade over time. And it's everything from the accumulation of DNA mutations to the erosion of telomeres to pro protein ag aggregates clogging up cellular machinery. There's so many mechanisms. And ultimately, it really is visible though. Like if we see the differences that we experience in our lifetimes, like I, I definitely know that I'm not the same as I was when I was 20. And I would much rather feel getting out of bed in the morning like I did when, when I was that 20-year-old than I do today. And so it's the accumulation of all those things that we can really just sum up to all of those things 
but they are, there's plenty of materials out there that break down all these things. One of the things that we have focused on at ACORN is the telomeres because it is such a big influence and it's the greatest biomarker that we have towards predicting the actual genetic age you have and your longevity. And so part of our services is actually analyzing your telomeres on an individual <coughs> cellular level. So it's a newer technology that's better than the other telomere kind of analyses that you'll see out there, but it gives you an idea of how much stress you're really putting in your cells to force them to divide. Because once those telomere lengths run out, your cells do go into senescence and self-destruct and start that cascade towards death. I didn't do that good of a job. Thank you so much. Okay, thank you so much. I really appreciate it.